everybody, this is Blossom. Welcome to my channel. My name is Jill, and you can find me on all the social media as The Essential Blossom. So I am in West Texas, which is where I'm at, is about an hour north of Abilene in U.S. So this is my craft room. I call it my happy place, as a lot of us crafters do. Um, this is a place where I talk about knitting, crochet, yarn, buying yarn, playing with yarn. I am the fiber floozy. So I want to say thank you. I have some new viewers, and I am very appreciative of anybody who spends any time with me. You guys are great. I'm enjoying getting some comments now, and things are kind of picking up a little bit, and it's very, very, um, it's just it's just good to be a part of the community and to be able to share with everybody and, and to communicate with everybody. It's really, really great. So I want to tell you all a little bit about myself that I have kind of alluded to and maybe you all kind of figured out some of it, but I am a hairdresser, cosmetologist, they call it an operator in Texas. I've had my license in Texas for 35 years and <laughs> I have a small beauty shop salon here in the small town where I live. I do a lot of older ladies, so I still have ladies who come in and do uh, the shampoo set every week. And honestly, for those that are like me, that if you're a beauty operator and you're watching this, you know what I mean. They're the meat of the business. The people who come every week, who are always there, they get perms, they get haircuts, they get color, they get a manicure, they get a pedicure, they pay the bills. So they're very special to me. Not just because they pay the bills, but they're very special to me. And I get very close to them, of course. And so, yeah, I am I call myself a one-man band. I work by myself. So it's a very small place, but I ha I can do manicures, pedicures, all of those things. Um, so, so yeah, um, I actually have several things that I do, several businesses, and so the shop is one of those things. I also have an Etsy shop, The Essential Blossom on Etsy. I sell essential oils through a company here that produces the oils and procures the oils from around the world and puts them out right here out of my little town. And the company is called Kendall and Company. K-E-N-D-A-L and Co. Company. And so I sell those oils as they are and I also use those oils to make my own products. And I use them every day. I wear, almost every day I wear this bracelet, which is lava. They're lava rocks. And I have various things on here at all times, but I have a little mix that I make for myself that is on here. And it holds that in and is around. And it's basically my perfume. I have trouble with perfumes. They tend to give me a headache. so. I've tried lots of different things, but I don't know. I haven't found anything yet that I can live with. So I'm sticking with my essential oils. I have the YouTube channel, which does take quite a bit of time. It does coordinate with my other things that I do. So I don't want to say that it's not a business because it is, but it's not the reason I really came here. Um, I just want to interact with everybody and be a part of the community. But, um, you know, everybody who does one of these, um, 
at some point or other, a lot of them have a business. They either dye yarn, they, they do this, they do that. So it's not anything new to say that you coordinate this with what you're doing, but it's part of my life. So that's the way I see it. I'm just telling you what's going on in my life. Also, recently, I also picked up doing um, a new product, and I'll talk about that later. So my hubby, who I talk about, who winds all of my yarn for me, he is mostly retired, and uh, I would say that if you ask me what his job is, because he does have some, he does do some odd jobs around town. There's a guy that he works with that he helps. But he fixes things. He's very handy. He's a jack of all trades. I've not seen anything he couldn't do. There's been a few new things recently in the last couple of years that he hadn't done before. But it wasn't that he couldn't do them. He just had never done them before. But that's mainly what he does is fix things at my shop if something goes wrong. I don't need to pay a plumber or an electrician or anything. I have to just send him a text and tell him what's going on. And usually he comes over if it needs to be done right away. If not, you know, we try to do things when the shop is closed. He fixes things here at home. And we have animals now that need to be cared for. Uh, we have two horses, a donkey, we have two dogs, we have ten cats, and that changes all the time. But right now we have ten full-size cats. And just recently, as of Friday, today is Sunday, if I didn't mention that, today is Sunday, the 10th of February of 2019. And as of Friday, we now have four cows. So we're excited about that because cows make more cows when you get a bull. So that is the plan is to start having calves. So I'm excited. Uh, right now we're just fattening them up, getting ready for spring. Okay, what have I finished? So, I have not finished a lot, and I know I said that last time, and I told you that I mostly started things, and I did it again. So, I did have a couple of orders, and this is the one that I was working on in the last video, and I have called this done. This is the dish mat that's done in the colors to look like the Pioneer Woman. It's front post, back post, which causes these ridges. So your dishes sit on the top of that and drain. And this is done with three strands. And I ran out of this red. And this was not white enough for the girl that was wanting it. And even though I can stretch it, you know, it's going to probably loosen up some. I just don't think she'd have been happy with the width of this. And so when I ran out of the red, I was like, well, okay. So I still had the white and the turquoise. But it just didn't look right just doing just those. So I called it done as it was. When I talked to my daughter, my oldest daughter is in New Orleans, and when I talked to her yesterday, she said, that will fit perfect on my counter. That's where that's going. And she loved it. She loved the colors and, and everything about it when we were FaceTiming. I got to FaceTime with my grandson. I just have the one grandson. The two girls. One that's married, <clears throat> the oldest and has the grandson, and they're in New Orleans, and then my youngest is close to me, and um, she is trying to get started with nursing, so she's not really wanting to get married just yet. This thread is the, 
reclaimed thread. It's actually that's actually a cream color. And then this is the turquoise, which is I love this yarn turquoise. And the red was another of those threads, the reclaimed thread. Now the reclaimed yarns, I'll talk more about that after a while too. So that is one. Okay, and then I sent with that I sent a scrubby, a red scrubby, and I sent two dishcloths for my daughter. She already had some scrubbies and doesn't didn't really use them. Uh, but she uses the dishcloths, so she got two neutral colored dishcloths. And then I started two more scrubbies, and I'll show you that in a little while. And that is it. But I also wanted to talk about one other thing here. Um, I mentioned this on the last, it, she was, this was on, on her last time. And we decided her name is Tawanda. My youngest daughter came up with that, and I like it. I had to, I had to stew on it for a little while, but I do like it. So I have steamed this out a little bit. I was having problems with something I had washed it with before. Was giving it a, an odd smell when it was wet, but I washed it again and I steam blocked it, steam blocked that out, and guys, I'm in love with it again. I just love these colors. But I had talked about this, and I could not find all the information on it, so I wanted to talk about it again because it is in my Ravelry, on on my Ravelry page, the page for it. It's I am Blossom64 on Ravelry. And this is called the Dimalangani Shawl. D-E-M. A-L-A-N-G-E-N-I, and it's by Wendy Neal. I will try to link that down below, but you can see the page in my Ravelry. And the yarn that I did, now this one here is Cascade Sunseeker, and I don't know, you probably can't see it, but it's a sparkle. And this other one here was a one-of-a-kind, remember? And I found the card. So there is the yarn attached to it, so I know this is the right one. And I told you it was by Mitchell's Creations, and she is Mitchell's C on Etsy. So M-I-T-C-H-E-L-L-S-C dot Etsy dot com. Mitchell's C. And this was called Sesabon Base, which is a DK. 100% Merino Superwash, and it was called Memories of You. So she has some of the most beautiful, and I checked her shop today, so I wanted to make sure I had all the right names and stuff, and y'all should go over there and look. I favorited several again today, and it's like, I'm trying so hard not to buy yarn right now because I'm going to that fiber fest. Anyway, I wanted to tell y'all some more about her. Okay. Okay, what am I working on? Well, I've got several things back in the corner. I mean, you can see I've got stuff stacked up back here. I rearranged the... I have to go through and redo the craft room after I've been creating for a while and I did that hang on I have several whips back here in the corner but I'm not going to show y'all those there are about four or five of them because I haven't worked on them so there may be some of the ones that I talked about last time but I haven't worked on them so I'm not going to bring them out but what I am working on is the scrubbies and so I did the two 
front sides. Now the yarn was given to me to use and I used it and made them and then I my uh, my hubby he wound it back up into the cake and this yarn is the I love this yarn and it's the tweed and it's the red tweed so this is for my my husband and I it's her is it's his aunt so it's Aunt Betty and so I have the two the two done so this is the fronts this is the yarn now she doesn't like the well she likes it she likes the cotton yarn but this matches her kitchen so I usually make it she she has a mat she's the one that usually makes those mats that one was a special one for you know in an order um, but she usually uses that type of yarn the tweed yarn to make the mats and I've got to make her the backs so I have the netting I got to get that cut into strips because I used the last of it that I had already cut up I'm looking up there because I got more up there but they're they're not red to go with that other uh, dish uh, mat so I've got to cut some more of that and I'll show you one that I've done here so here's a ball of the the netting cut into strips and I tie it together somewhere here's one roll it up into a ball and I make the other side and what's unique about these is you get these pieces where it's, it's tied and that just sort of gets incorporated and makes it stronger so if you can see there's all those on the back side that gets put in between now Betty's going to want the red not the black And then, not only that, but I try to, as I'm working it, going around, I try to pull a little bit of these ends in to make it a little stronger. As And that's what really, I tried doing it without doing that, and they fell apart too fast. And another thing I do, if I'm crocheting, I'm going to show you this real quick. I didn't plan on this. This is not in my notes, but I'm going to do it. <laughs> but if I'm doing this, and like this particular strand, this part is a, is a thinner strip. I just happen to cut a thinner piece. So I will do just double crochet right into the top. See, and then I'll pull that end in. can't see this. I pull that end in. Get in there. I love how it cooperates on camera. And then kind of look and see. Well, that's that's pretty good. Okay, let's do the next one. That one's not too bad. But it'll start to look, and I do two in each. That's how you increase. Another double. You, you have to pull on it. You have to work at it. And if it looks thin like that, that situation right there, I'll put another one in there. And then that, almost a cluster of them, so that it's a little thicker. Okay. 
said I was going to do. <clears throat> Sorry. I said I was going to do a tutorial on that, but I haven't got to it yet. Okay, so that's the scrubbies. I'm working on my daughter's pillow. And I got the front side done. It's so different. It's if I had a small pillow, I'd already be done. But I'm doing it on this square pillow. And I did do it a little bit too wide, but I'm, the back's just not going to need to be as big. And the back I'm doing in the white, remember, and I'm using those big needles. It's fun. It's different, but it's fun. So anyway, I got one, got the front side done. Okay, let me grab something. I'll be right back. Okay. I have a couple of new starts and some stuff that I've been working on that you've already seen. So let me show you the progress on this one. This one is the garter scarf. untangled and stretch it out a little so you can see. I've come to the fourth color. So this is the ball of minis that my husband wound for me, and he chose the, the order of them because I'm not so great at putting the colors together. Okay, there's that one. And those yarns are from Crystal Skies Creations, Crystal Skies Hand Dye on Etsy and Amber's Yarn Shop on Etsy. It's a mother and daughter. And it's in my Mrs. Brown's bag. Okay, so that's that one. And then I have talked about this one and you haven't seen it yet. I have been working on it, but I've been doing it at work. This one has been sitting up there. Guys, I put that yarn scheme as my pull. Okay, this is made from Okay, come on, Anita. Here it is. From the Wool Like by Loops and Threads. And this is they have a pattern on the back. I'm not doing that one, although I would like to do that one later. It's just that it calls for a whole lot more yarn than what I'm doing. And I'm already holding this double. 85% acrylic and 15% nylon. And this is a one super fine. Distributed by Michaels, I believe. 
Is it loops and threads? I have this all the time. Okay. Anyway, this one is, where's the color? Okay, this is the black. So we're doing black. And then there's a blue and the cream. And it is very beigey, like a beige creamy color. The blue is called blue denim, and it does have kind of, I'm not, not going to even try to show you because it's so fine, you're not going to see it. But it does have a little bit of a like tweedy brush denim kind of look to it. And that's called beige. Okay, show you what I'm doing with it. So this is not a pattern. I am just making it up as I go. And I may write this up into a pattern because I really like how it's coming out. So we start with the black, then we've got the cream, then we've got the denim, and then I'm marling it, which means I'm holding, like here, hold the blue and the black together. Here I'm holding the black and the cream together. Here the cream and the blue together. And now I've started here not marling, you're seeing the back side, and just starting again with the black. So there'll be a straight black stripe, and then a straight white stripe, and then I'll start marling again. And I'm adding stitches at the ends to make it wider. And I'm trying to decide whether I'm going to go to a certain width and stop, and then start with the color at that width or just do another one probably just do another one start the same way do another one and do them together in the middle and make the shawl that way instead of going forever and then going back down that's what i'm thinking and i love the feel of this and i'm telling you guys do not shy away from this wool like when you see it and you say, that stuff is so fine. It's a one. So when you wind it up, and you can see it's fuzzy, when you wind it up, you can use from the center and the outside and hold it double. My husband wound this for me double so I don't have to pull from the outside but you could you could just wind it up and hold it double okay I'll do that later I got a mess and this I wanted you guys to see this bag I know we're not supposed to have favorites and I love all of my bags but I was so tickled when I got this one. Got the strap. It's got a ring here. It's got the polka dots inside. And I know she doesn't have any of these anymore. Or she didn't last time I looked. You might try. And this is a Bags by Awesome Granny on Etsy. And she and her friend do a podcast. The friend's name is Nymphomaniac. Things got a little crazy with the two of them. They had some things going on over the holidays, and they haven't put up an episode in a while, and I miss it. Oh, 
if I can remember the name of that, I will let you know. Okay. That's that one. I had talked about it, but I hadn't shown it to you. Okay, my new... <laughs> the next new one... So, I had that mat in this bag. This is the bag by Randy of Randy's Ramblings. Randy's Random Ramblings podcast. And it's Ann Sear Handmade on Etsy. This is the bag that she made. I like the drawstring. I like the zippers, but I don't know why. I just really like the drawstring. I'm doing this one. So, here's my colors. Okay. I can't find my ball band for the red. I'm doing these in Heartland. I love Heartland. I didn't want to use it. I have it in several colors. I also have the hunter green, the black, a blue. I bought several of them on sale at a place called Shop Cup. And it was going out. And they were 40% off. Let me think of which is which. Okay. This is Smoky Mountains. Dog hair. They're all heathered. Tweety heathered. They're heather. Heather color. Smoky Mountains. The dark. My lighter choice is Grand Canyon. Looks gray. It's It's gray, but it's a tan. It's like a, a tan gray. Anyway, it's called Grand Canyon. You could look it up online probably and see a picture of it. So that's two the two colors and the red. And they're all heartland. And I've got the yoke started. That goes. This is the first part. I like the way it flares back here. It's got this waffle stitch here. Now this is from Crochet Magazine, Winter 2018. Showed you, I showed you that a minute ago. And this one is called The Modern Stripe top down party by Tammy Hildebrand now they used Barocco vintage and number four worsted weight 
but I had been looking for something to use this heartland for. And this red has also got like a heathered look to it. It's really difficult to see on the camera. Yeah, sorry. Of course, I thought sticking it in your face would help. So yes, I'm making a coat. This Heartland, if you've not worked with it, is so soft and pliable and, and drapey. And that's why I chose it, because I didn't want it to be, I like the way that flows out down at the bottom. And I just like the shape of it. And I'm doing this in the largest size. A 2x. So there we go. Here I was trying not to lean down. Okay. Okay. Now I just started some new socks. I'm using double point needles from Michael's, I think, it's Yarnology. These are size one, which is a 2.25. That's what was called for. Hold on, got my needle. I'll be looking for that later when I'm trying to do that one. And I'm using Croy Sock, and this color is called Clover. Clover something. Ah, it's not here. It's got harvesty colors here and there. So that's not a, it's not a lot of orange, but it does have orange in it. And I just started. And I have a mess. Because I was doing this during Friday Night Knit In on the Fiber Friends Friday Night Knit In on Facebook. Yeah. That's going to be the best to undo, but soft one. And the pattern I'm going to use is the super simple cuff down sock on Ravelry by Louise Patterson. She is wildfire, wildflower wool here on YouTube and she runs the Friday Fiber Friends Friday Night Knit In group on Facebook and she is I've talked about it before you know she is one of the three ladies who is on the Fiber Friends podcast so yeah because my husband has been asking for another pair of socks segue I knit him a pair of socks a year ago. I used two two different yarns, and these are dirty. He's been wearing them. Uh huh. I got some darning to do. So, what I can say is he is knit worthy because he wears them and he wears holes in them. 
So I've got to repair those. And here I was just Friday uh, casting on those new socks for him. And he brings me these socks today and is like, I should have had those other ones done already. Okay. I have one more new start. It's not even started. I'm just going to show you because it's part of something else. I'm going to use this yarn, which is, I want to say this is uh, Barcelona. And our waitress at the cafe saw my husband's hat that I did for him and would like a hat in these colors. She just gave us colors and my husband picked out the yarn. And this other one is new. It's the reclaimed sweater. If you can see the sparkle in that. It's silver, and it's just like the other threads. You know, it's got several in one. So I'm going to hold those together and do my first bunless hat. And there was um, two... skeins of yarn that I got last week. The man my husband works with, his aunt passed away and she had this yarn and it was the homespun and the color is prairie. So I had two of those. But I've already put those away and I didn't want to get those out. The other new thing is what I'm wearing. What do y'all think of this? So I did not make this shawl. This is crochet. It came from, as my husband says, across the pond. I'm wearing my owl. Okay. How fun is it to get this kind of package? with the customs and Royal Mail, internationally tracked and signed. So much fun. And the lady who made it, she sent me a wonderful little card saying thank you. And her name is Jan Carruthers, crochet designer. She is the Urban Gypsy Crochet. Now, some of you who watch me also are a part of our Saturday night craft night with, with Jan. And I'm just so excited to have something she made. So... I'm going to take it off, show you all. I love the colors. It's got this wavy shell border. And it's probably done. It didn't say but I believe it was done in something from Lolly's, Lolly's Wool Shop over in the UK, which is not something you can get here. Uh, I'm just so excited to have something she made. Just tickled. Just so tickled about it. I wore it all day yesterday. Been wearing it all afternoon today. And I love it.
So yeah, so special to me. Okay. I also wanted to mention, I just got today, I got the pattern from Seta of Seta's Place. Hi, Seta. The Debbie cowl. It's the Debbie neck warmer. And I got that pattern today. I just wanted to mention that because I'm going to, I've got all the yarn and stuff ready. I've got buttons. I'm ready to go. And I got the pattern today. So that'll be, look for that in the next episode. So what have I been listening to? So in the back where my essential oil area is, where I make stuff and I'm listening to John Grisham's The Broker. Five CDs, six hours. Final hours in the Oval Office. Outgoing President grants a last minute pardon. And I'm guessing that he's not a good guy. So, there's that one. And the other one is Still Life with Crows by Douglas Preston and Lincoln Child. The fun part of this one, and I'm listening to that one here. Sorry, yarn fibers. Let's breathe a bit. The fun part about this one is it's read by Renee. I'm going to try it. Aberjona. He's Odo. He's Odo on Star Trek on Deep Space Nine. My husband and I are Trekkies. We watch a lot of Star Trek. And I've seen almost all of Deep Space Nine. And I've seen almost all of the series. So if you're still here, Santa, I'm feeling you. And I was listening to the voice and I hadn't paid attention to who, who was on the on there for the for reading it and I was like gosh that voice sounds familiar I should know who that is and I asked my husband to come and listen and he was listening he goes I've almost got it I've almost got it and about the time that I asked him to come and listen is when it hit me who it was so then I got this down I was like yeah and then he got it <laughs> so that is really fun to hear some of you are so familiar with reading that. I just started it. Uh, I don't know if it's going to be any good or not. I'm sure it is. I'm going to enjoy it because Odo's reading it. I did not finish Ready Player One that I checked out from the library um, on audio. I tried and I just couldn't finish it before it went back. So I'm probably going to check it out again. I'll, I'll get myself in the queue to get it back again and finish off where I started. Okay, so the next part is shop update and life update. So if you're ready to go, thank you for being here. Thank you to my new subscribers. Thank you. Please hit the like button. It helps just it just hit the like button and hit the subscribe. I'm trying to do some new things with the channel, so there may be something that you like that comes down the road later. So I appreciate it. It just really helps. Um, so you're still here. <laughs> um, I went to the doctor this week. This is a kind of subject that if you are a little squeamish, if you don't really like talking about this stuff, I will understand. I just wanted to warn you up front. But I've been struggling with IBS most of my adult life. But I usually can control it with what I eat. In the last couple of years, it's been worse. It's been pretty bad. 
So I went to the emergency room last week. I had started to have pain in my stomach. Couldn't tell where it's coming from, but I hadn't had pain before. So we went, they tested everything. Doctor comes in, I tell him what's going on, and he says, I'm really not going to be able to help you. I'm self pay. Why why don't you go to a GI doctor? I'm self pay. I do not have insurance. Okay, well, tell me what's going on. So I gave him the rundown and he he said, Well, you're handling it pretty well because your blood works perfect. So why do I feel crap? <laughs> so he did do some more testing. I never heard back because in the paperwork in my checkout, they said, if there's anything there, they will call you. They haven't called. So I went to the GI doctor on Wednesday of this week. And tomorrow, I have a colonoscopy. So he, he doesn't feel like it's anything serious. But it's really made me kind of, I get nauseous, I get tired, I get um, tired of it all. I can't leave the house before a certain time in the morning. If you're dealing with this, you know what I'm talking about. If you have colitis, if you have Crohn's, if you have um, IBS, you know what I'm talking about. Makes it difficult to run a business. Makes it difficult to do all the things I was talking about earlier. I ain't griping. I'm fine. I really feel pretty good. I just get so tired and I just want to know what's wrong. And if there's something we can do about it. So I'll let you know. Let you know what we find out. So far, there's no bad news. Okay. Now my shop update. Let me get another drink. All this talking. I didn't eat yesterday. I haven't eaten today. Flare fluids for two days. I'm hungry. There will be broth later. Okay. I had to reach on the floor for this one. So, I told you I sell essential oils, and I try to let you guys know of what the specials are every month, because every month we do a buy one, get one. And you can see this is Kindle & Co. that I was talking about, and this month is Lang Lang. And the bottle reads that it is aromatic, topical and dietary, which means you could ingest it. This particular strain is the Kananga odorata. It's from a tree. It's good for your skin, your hair. It's calming. It's an antioxidant. And it's most often used for skin perfume blends, that kind of thing, um, the anxiety. So it's usually in a blend with other things like vetiver, uh, some other things that help for mood. <clears throat> uh, diffuser blends, perfume blends, massage oil. It's good for stress because it's a calming. And the reason that it's on this month so it's supposedly good for your libido. It's a month of love. You gotta have a love oil. So these are buy one, get one. Let me know if you want one. Also, I got the scrubs made. This is the lavender scrub. I don't know if I showed this. I may have lost the footage for this. 
and the sad's everything. So the lavender scrub is a sugar scrub made with organic sugar, the, our lavender essential oil, coconut oil, and it's an exfoliant. You can use that on your face, but you don't want to do it every day. This one is for dry spots, bug bites, scars, burns. You can use it on pets. It has our skincare oil blend in it. And yeah, beeswax and moisturizers. Got some vitamin E. Uh, these are in my shop on the Etsy store. And the thing I'm kind of excited about this week is a new thing that I've started doing. Once I get all of my testing done, I will start using it. I used it for a few days um, to test it and see, make sure that you know I didn't have a reaction to it or something before I placed an order. But I am selling CBD hemp. I have the capsules in a 12.5 in a 25. I have the oil. I have the muscle and joint cream. The hand and body lotion. And a new product, Tattoo Aftercare. This is when you get after you get your tattoo, you have to keep it moist and uh, and heal it. And a lot of a lot of times they use aquaphor, so this would be in place of that. Now this company is Windy Hill. They're in Colorado, just north of Denver. She is a pharmacist, and she is my husband's stepsister and they have been doing this for several years and I have finally got to a place where I can go ahead and start selling it so I'm going to be selling these products and you can contact me through Facebook is where I would do that and the essential blossom on Facebook and I'll let you know about it uh, there should be some things posted there already but I'm all, what, what I'm excited too about with this is I'm going to use mainly this oil with my essential oils and make products as well. That's what I'm really excited about. So I will have both what I make and these. So that's what's new to this week in the shop. I did put a few pieces in there, um, handmade pieces and things in there after the last podcast, but they weren't anything that was just just finished. A couple, there was a couple that were, but they're in there also. Okay, I did a happy planning video that will be uploaded soon. If not, if it's not already up there. And I will say this, I don't know if you are into planning or not, but this is a happy planner, and this is that's what I talked about in that video. I had talked about doing that, and I finally got the video done. My husband laughed at me. I was trying to edit it because it came out to be fairly long, and I was like, I just go on and on. No, you don't do that. <laughs> Sometimes I do talk about stuff I like to talk about. <laughs> I also did a um, a blog where we I walked around the property and showed y'all the horses and the dogs, and it's just a ten minute video. If you get a chance, go and watch that. Something different. Try to do a few things different. So here's my question. Y'all want to just sit and stare at the wall of yarn and me talking, going on and on. Uh, and I love doing that, and I will continue to do that. But what else do you want to see me do? 
Um, okay, that was pretty open-ended. Uh, let's see. I want to know, do we want to do a Ravelry page? Um, there may, I'm not saying I will, but it is a possibility I may do a giveaway down the road. I just kind of want to see what you guys, you know, you okay with what I'm doing or you want to do something different? Anyway, I just like doing this and I like talking to y'all. And I, Evidently, I like to talk. I talk all day long. It's it's me. Um, ooh. Thank you for the new people who came and subscribed. But all of you who are liking my videos, that's helping tremendously. Um, I guess that's all I've got. Y'all take care, and I will see you the next time on the Fiber Fousey. Bye, y'all.